having thought about it a bit more when it comes to the whole Jerry Lorenzo joining Adidas thing, it maybe makes sense long term, innit? It's like a long term strategy because I thought about it a little bit, you know, when you brought it up, when you think about well, it came to mind more so recently because I was thinking about the whole Kanye Kim divorce. I was like, oh, actually, what's happening with his gap deal? They made me think about Adidas in general and the fact that Kanye has gone out of his way to kind of, you know, um, not slap the Adidas logo all over his shoes. It's mostly a Yeezy thing. Um, apart from maybe the Wave Runners, there's not a lot of kind of I Adidas iconography and the stuff that he does. Maybe the basketball shoe too. It's sort of like a, you know, a blank canvas that he sort of works on on his own regard. And then, of course, the box has, has iconography on it. But people, you know, branding wise, think of it more of as the easy shoe than the Adidas shoe. So there is a bit of a disconnect. And I always feel like Adidas, the best part of Adidas usually is the skateboarding division, right? From the Busanets to the, um, that Lucas Pugh guy, you know, not the Palace shoe because fuck Palace, but in general, that kind of model of the shoe that's where they do some of their best stuff but the normal inline shit it's a bit tired especially when you think of the models they keep re-releasing the superstar um the superstar <laughs> the campus 80 they just you know they just keep recurgitating the same shoe again and again it doesn't feel like so far the public has resonated or connected with their shoes too tough there's obviously the stuff they're doing with pharrell but i thought maybe the signing of jay lorenzo might kind of signal um an acceptance from adidas that they probably aren't where they should be considering the amount of looks they've had especially with the easy north stuff they should be building on that a little bit more and allowing themselves to compete on the equal footing with adidas at the moment because if you think about it really and truly the maybe the only company that's actually competing with nike like tete tete -tet, like you know shoe for shoe release for lease release for a release might be new balance it might be a bit of a weird thing to say but it might be new balance especially when you consider how limited and samey some of their shoes are right? with the exception of some recent shoes they're all quite you know they're all sort of in the same sort of aesthetic sort of look appeal but they seem to be the only sort of brand footwear brand that's really battling especially when it comes to the limited edition side of things with nike you know release for release shoe for shoe but hey that should be in that position but again because they keep focusing on the superstar and the campus and the easy stuff there's no real scope for them to go anywhere else and the sad thing about it the disappointing thing is that they have probably one of the best archives out there maybe some could even argue especially when it comes to stuff from the 80s to the 90s maybe some stuff is even better than what nike's on especially when you take out some of the iconic things you know such as air max from nike in terms of just general shoes they have some of the best stuff out there you know they have a their legacy in sport a real deep history all that sort of stuff so it's nothing is sort of like made up overnight but they're still not able to compete and this might signal change going forward this particular shoe that i'm going to speak about now which is the Adidas Forum 84. Um, I've seen it around. I've seen people uh, do their own little rendition of them. Um, and I've always kind of thought it was maybe one of the more underrated models within the Adidas kind of catalog and something they should probably tap into a lot more um, when you consider how it looks, especially in a low and how it looks as a high. It's the one shoe that currently is maybe on the same level if not something that could be marketed the same way as an air force one because you think of something like a, even like an air jordan which is obviously you know outside with jordan brand stuff but that doesn't normally work as a high or as a low uh the dunk sort of similar to it like an air force one right it looks as a high and a low and it's the thing that you can kind of reiterate again and again you can slap collaborations alongside it you can slap limited edition colorways materials production methods whatever you want you could do and with Adidas's ability at the moment which they do far better than nike their ability to actually retro a shoe to its og specifications as you see here you see the you know the exposed bits here you see the addition of this sort of like foam uh, nylon tongue you see all this distress stuff here that's not super distressed you see the off-white midsole they have a and, and even just the profile of the shoe the shape the style the actual shape of it right the fact that you don't have this banana toe thing that nike would usually have they've kind of gone out of their way to um, invest in actual tooling the actual last from that year from yesteryears or maybe just re-engineer it from the ground up which costs a lot of money um but they do it because this is what ends up separating these shoes from regular stuff that they have out there and even again it's just, an, it's just a simple all white colorway for the most part with some great assets and you know maybe may be some discolored bits and pieces but because they've spent so much time actually reconstructing a shoe to its og specifications it actually looks great as an og 
colorway. It doesn't need any bells and whistles. So you can just imagine laid up layer on top of that a collaboration with an artist or somebody that resonates with a brand, a uh, collaboration with a, you know, an initiative, a platform, maybe an ID thing, whatever it may be, just layer those on top and you suddenly now got a shoe that can you know, permeate and kind of, you know, live in different markets all at the same time, which then will allow Adidas to be a little bit more visible as a brand, right? So it's not just the Yeezy thing only going forward or just a Nike skateboarder thing, which again is only, it's, you know, again, um, which only kind of lives within the skateboarding world for some reason, right? You hardly see, which is weird as well. You hardly see regular folks walking around in flipping puss knits, right? Even though they're one of the best shoes out there, right? I love them. I've got a few pairs I've had over the years, you know, without the tongue snipped on and leaving the tongue on itself. But um, they don't do a good enough job, I feel, of marketing the stuff lifestyle-wise outside in general folk um which is a real shame considering again the archive and the things that they have there available and i think this shoe specifically the editors forum again in 84 in the orbit gray orbit gray yeah um in the high and the low might be the thing that changes things going forward and there is definitely a bit of a sea change a bit of a f something happening behind the scenes i spoke about this stuff happening again with the samba there's this other shoe that they're re-releasing at the moment. It's I thought, this one, right? Uh, what's it called? The Valencia from the archive. There definitely is a bit of a, um, there's definitely is a bit of a purposeful uh, decision to go back into the archives, um, you know, uh, re-retro, retro, sorry, some of these OG shapes and silhouettes and models that are basically overlooked and things that might kind of freshen up the brand, which is ironic considering that they're retros, but they're not the same old tired campus and superstar that have been flogged to death. These should be the platforms or these should be the shoes, especially outside of Nike, um, I mean, sorry, outside of the skateboarding that should be highlighted a little bit more. And then you look at stuff that um, this blog or this sorry Twitter account called Street, Streetwear Night Live kind of highlighted um, Heron Preston um, got a, got his pair of uh, this is another shoe as well that I like this colorway this sort of like a white with royal blue um, he highlighted that the other day um, Heron Preston got a pair here says since we're on the topic of this forum we need to discuss the strap I've always been a fan of taking scissors to your shoes to remove anything I deem unnecessary and this morning I saw Heron Preston cutting off his and I have to say this was the right move and this again could be another route because this is you know this is an easy layout for a collaboration especially when you consider the fact that you know this new era of designers and stuff they don't seem to be wedded or sort of like um attached to the idea of only staying loyal to one brand um they seem to the team to they tend to do you know um collaborations with product with various people at the same time sometimes in the same industry and i think in general even though brands would probably prefer if they don't i'm assuming most brands will prefer if the person they worked with like you know think of matthew williams and nike i'm i'm, I'm sure they prefer that he stay with them exclusively but in general, I think it does great for the entire ecosystem if these people are allowed to move around from brand to brand doing different, you know, capsule projects because it just, you know, basically brings the money or centers the money back into some, back into the culture. You know? The culture, it just brings the money, it just kind of keeps the money in that scene. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't go anywhere else. It just stays there because they're recycling around. There's the idea of competition, um, you know, one-upmanship. If you sign my Williams for a better Nike and you want to sign the next person coming up, you want to make sure you provide them with new opportunities, new learnings. He takes his learnings to another brand. It just creates like a healthy um, industry, a healthy environment. And I think usually, in my opinion, these guys, especially when it comes to Adidas and Nike, they're usually at their best when they're both competing on the same level. It's not great when they're, you know, when one's sort of like, you know, punching down the other one's trying to, you know, um, with all their might, trying to hang on for their life. Look at people like Reebok and stuff and Umbro, you know, dead in the war, right? Puma, you know, they don't really have a clue what they're doing um, and they're really finding it hard to compete. But when they're actually on the same level, completing, competing blow for blow, you generally do tend to get the best of them and who ends up winning? us the consumers we end up with the ones winnings in this regard so this is an easy something layup that they could do even with Heron's connection with Nike and stuff this would easily work you know getting him to do a shoe specifically himself maybe for his own brand or I mean himself as an individual as being a kind of quote-unquote influencer and also for his own brand could easily work and it's just you know it's a it's a shoe that could really sort of change things be the difference maker in terms of where Adidas is placed in a conversation and then you also have the idea that this is also could be doubled up as a basketball shoe it is a basketball shoe right but it's obviously kind of gone more so to the lifestyle realm um I'm assuming the hiring of Jay Lorenzo is more so 
them sort of like focusing on the idea of him creating new silhouettes as opposed to you know doing the old stuff but still there is a lot of scope for things to change going forward with this sort of stuff so i'm eager to see how adidas kind of adopt the forum how they bring it back what they do with it how they make it work because again like i said i think there's a lot of scope for it there just needs to be a little bit more willingness to take risks a lot more willingness to maybe um not rest on their laurels and not just want to do things just for being different sake right you look at that what was that shoe recently featured that johnny is it johnny tommy cash johnny cash one of these flipping white lads on social media did some superstar shoe that they put together that's just like elongated and it's like cool we get it right it's good for a gimmick it makes complete sense but in terms of wanting to you know um change the conversation allow you to even be part of the conversation uh moving the needle whatever it may be called or capturing a new market or maybe moving some other customers from other brands over to yours that doesn't really do much really do you know what i mean it's just a bit of a gimmick that isn't gonna last too long and it'll be forgotten about you know pretty soon i don't even remember who the guy is who collaborated on the first place so um that speaks volumes to it but yeah i definitely see a lot of room there for this to be a new thing going forward i'm really game for it i've already got a few on my wish list i'm gonna end up copying just to kind of mix up and be a little bit different but again i could definitely see this included in my rotation for all white shoes in the same vein of a you know an air force one sits there the air force one obviously has legacy status right iconic status but you know you remove that strap and let's let's not be um dumb here but that strap even especially on the high actually sits pretty well the fact that they have it at an angle it's pretty different to an Air Force One as well, where the strap is sort of like around here and it sort of like sits weird and even the on the mid, it sort of like kind of crumples up easily. This is kind of a lot more, in, in the, for a worse sense of the word, it's a lot more ergonomic in terms of how your foot actually flexes and how the shoe actually sits. But you remove that strap, you've definitely got another option of how you move things around. But I can definitely see this being a big thing going forward. 